welcome back to D-Lab everybody. This is part two of the Johnson Viking II that was purchased off of eBay. In part one I did a simple initial test. Had to change the filter caps and she sprung to life. However, there is no modulation and the push to talk system was in on. So in this video we're going to repair those things plus I have an update for you guys that you're absolutely going to love about Mary. W5EYE. Yes, she is still alive, and I believe this is her Viking 2. At the end of this video, I'll read the email that I got from her daughter. So, going back to our initial video of this Johnson Viking 2 transmitter, it was purchased on eBay. When I removed the bottom cover, I noticed it still had the old crusty filter caps installed, so I immediately changed those out and gave the Viking a test spin, found that there was no modulation and the push to talk relay was not activating. All right. So the next common failure of these Vikings, especially when you see these old relays in, is the coils are usually open. Should be around 10K. If I get down here on the coil, you can see there's no activity coils wide open. That's because they tap these off of the 300 volt circuit so that that runs out through your microphone and back grounds it and that's what pulls in the contact. They're very fragile and prone to failure. Over here in the modulation area somebody tapped in to the 300 volts with this little 20k resistor and that's what's feeding this guy. So that's got to come out. In preparation for repair of the push to talk circuit, I've already glued in a D-Lab PTT module and this will connect direct to the mic jack. Also wires swing up here to the plate switch. These two guys grab filament voltage so this big relay comes out which will open up some real estate. Alright now let's take a look at the culprit for the loss of modulation. Another common failure on these Vikings, especially when you totally lose modulation, is this little interstage transformer. So you got a primary that shoots over here to a little 6AU6. Secondary is over here that feeds the 807s. So if you were to take your center tap of your secondary, so you got about 100 ohms there, go to the other side. There he is, about 112 ohms. The primary, so it'd also be a couple hundred ohms. So we're going to go up here, and then the feed is right here on the 300 volt line. You can see the primary of the interstage transformer is open. Usually, the cause of the primary opening on this interstage transformer is these old caps. They start shorting out over time, become leaky bias changes, current changes, and the primary can't handle it anymore and she pops open. So you can either find another stock interstage transformer and of course repair this area before you apply power or you can replace it with a Hammond 124B and that's what we're going to do on this Viking. So plan of attack. First I'm going to go ahead and get this big relay out of here remove the tapping resistors that they grab off the 300 volt line and we'll clear out these old caps get the interstage transformer out we're going to wire it up stock and retest I've got the old interstage transformer pulled and this gives me a good opportunity to work into the audio area without having that guy in my way so I'm going to carve out these old caps check the resistors and I do see a couple resistors of the wrong value already. So somebody's been in here previously. Also noticed, if you look at the leads of the modulation transformer on this terminal board, they look pretty rough. So I hope that that transformer is okay. There's the pile of the old audio section parts. We're completely rebuilt now to stock configuration. And we have the Hammond 124B interstage transformer going to the 807s. Push to talk is wired up. 
The big old nasty relay is gone. We are ready for a test. All right, everybody, it's test time. I've restored the audio section to stock, except for the addition of the Hammond 124B interstage transformer. We now have the D-Lab push-to-talk system installed, which only puts about 16 volts or so on your microphone, better than 200. And I've got Robert Mondavi's Woodbridge in the lab to assist me with a task. So the Viking 2 is warmed up. I still have not fixed the glass and the meter. So once again, I have to pay particular attention to make sure that that doesn't bind up during the test. We are still on 40 meters. I have not really interrupted any of the settings since part one. There's my grid. And here in a second, what I'll do is change the camera angle so you can see the metering and the output. Remember, in part one, we had full output, but no modulation. Let's see what we got now. So in case you're wondering, yes, I did check the two 6AU6 preamp tubes and the 807s. But the section that you saw repaired was all that I did, okay? There's a lot more that needs to be done on this thing, I'm sure. All right, so here we go. There's our plate. Still got a little bit of a squeaker there. A little over 100 watts output. The important thing is now mod current. What is it with zero audio? Looks right around 50 to 60 milliamps. That's a good sign. Let's bring up the audio. All right, so I got a little closer here so you can see the metering of the Viking and the output at the same time on my dummy load watt meter. So we'll key her up. I've got the audio all the way down. You can see our resting current, about 50 to 60 mils. Good sign. Bring up some audio. Oh yeah, we're talking. And if you look at the watt meter, you can see she's uh, idling at about 120 watts. And when I talk, she's getting up to around 200. So it looks like we got pretty good forward modulation now. Much better than the way it was before. Here's a moment you've been waiting for, an update about Mary, W5EYE, who lives in Dripping Springs, Texas. I actually looked her up on QRZ.com, tried to email her, but the email bounced. And I looked at this picture and I thought, man, if she bought this transmitter in 1957, what's the chances of her being around? So I located another ham in Dripping Springs, Texas, and I forwarded the information to him and I said, do you know Mary? Well, I didn't get a response from him and I thought, ah, oh, man, you know, dead end road, right? Well, a couple days later, I got this email, it's up on my screen, from her daughter, Pat, okay? It says, hi, Terry, this is Pat, Mary's daughter. She said, that is my mom for sure. I showed the picture and she recognized it and the rig. So she did get to see the video. How cool is that, huh? She's 90 years young now. Um, she didn't remember much about the, you know, the transmitter itself, but she said the picture jogged her memory, although she couldn't tell me much about it. I'll give you the history that I know about that rig, and maybe this will help. Um, she says, I sent you some pictures of her family around the radio. I'm gonna post that on the video. This picture was taken in 1957. I was about five years old. My brother Michael was six, Claire was seven, and Charlie was nine. Dad died at 89 years old, and in the past, even when he moved to Dripping Springs, uh, he still talked on the ham rig, which is very cool. So her mom was the big ham radio operator, and she says she had many admirers, men and women friends that had lots of cards that she had collected. She was a sweet talker, and of course, she didn't have time to bother with us kids. So she'd tell us to go out and play while she played with her radio. It's very cool. Uh, so anyway, at the end of this, she requested to have the picture back, which I'm going to send to her on Monday. But isn't it cool that Mary's still alive? She got to see her Johnson Viking 2 come back to life. And that legacy will live on for probably another 30 to 40 years. Well, I have to say that this is probably one of my favorite Johnson Viking repairs. Not only because I got to work on the old classic rig, 
but it was getting to know its history, where it came from, and seeing pictures of the original owner. I can't guarantee you that this was actually her Johnson Viking 2, because there's no way to compare this one to the new model that was in that picture. But more than likely, it was. Because how else would that picture have been in the manual that accompanied this transmitter? That's what I love about this hobby, guys. There's all kinds of mysteries out there, and we all just got to live one. Hope you enjoyed it.